Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio here with an um, sort of a different project, sort of. Um, I got a lovely envelope from my friend Peg Robinson. I don't know if it's been a week or two weeks ago. And I, I looked through all the stuff I thought I had and set it down on the floor next to where I, I art knowing that it was next in line to be put away. And I emptied the contents of the envelope onto my desk and found something in there that I didn't see the first time. And it's this. Now, I have opened the package and I had to reconstruct it. Thankfully, the stuff was still in the trash can so I could dig it out. <laughs> right, this says um, Papers by Catherine. Decorative, handmade, creative... De no, decorative, handmade papers. So I pulled this off. Here is the... And I tried looking on uh, Amazon for them. I saw other papers, and then I went to, I just Googled it and found that there is a site, but the stuff that's on there, I think her name is Catherine Poole, P-O-O-L-E. Uh, the stuff that's on there is like 6x6 six six or 8x8 eight eight scrapbook paper. And that's not what I was looking for. I wanted to find these. And I couldn't find any on Amazon. If anybody Googles it and finds it, please let me know because I really like these shapes. So this is vellum. And it comes with 10, and it says right here down there, 10 of these. They're pre-cut, pre-folded vellum forms. All right. So I was watching some series on Netflix and doodling around with stuff and thought, well, I think when I look at this, it makes a flower. And since I really love doing stuff with flowers, I decided to make a flower. So I did. So I took the first one and I folded it up. I took the bone folder and made the creases, you know, more sharp. Then I took uh, Sharpies. And I colored in the, um, let me show you this way. I took the Sharpie and kind of followed this around for a leaf. And then did the green Sharpie. And then the yellow were the leaves to the sunflower. And that's also yellow Sharpie. But then it went one step in the wrong direction. And I colored the inside in which I thought should have been a brownish color because that's what our sunflowers looked like with colored pencils. And I, I see that this was a mistake. And so I thought, okay, I can live with it for, you know, a short amount of time. Um, so it folds up and then it's cute again. This, not so much. All right, so for what I did was I drew all these little circles for the seeds and that kind of stuff. I drew it with uh, number four, is it Statler's? Statler? Yeah, Statler or Statler pens. And then colored it in with um, colored pencils, and that's where it went all wrong. <laughs> so I decided that I need to make this better. I really like the idea but I needed to improve on it. So I took this one. Let me put something underneath it so you can see it better. This is the cardboard from the packaging. So I took this and I decided that the center portion of the sunflower needed to be smaller. This is just way too big because the leaves and the petals are so much bigger. So I took this. Now I haven't, this is my first time folding it. I didn't use the tool on it, the um, bone folder on it. So I'm just folding these right now. I just laid it out flat and piddled around with it this morning and thought, well, I should make a video. All right, so let me do the last one here. I'm not prepared exactly. All right, so then when I did it, I folded up all of these like I did the other one. Well, actually, I laid it out flat, 
Okay, but to show you why I did this, let me pull these guys in and flip it over. I wanted to be sure that the center was more centered. So I took a ruler and went from corner to corner on both sides to kind of find direct center. Then I needed a circle that was a good clean circle and I got a die from a set of uh, gra graduated circles, just laid it in the middle, took a pencil, kind of eyeballed it and took a pencil and drew around it. And that's how I got that right there. Okay, so my idea is, we'll see if this works, I don't know. My idea is to make the petals to the flower longer. The only problem is, is that I don't, the leaves on a sunflower are kind of heart shaped and I don't know how I would do those on here. So I think for the time being, I will just do the center and I will do the leaves, you know, out this way. Because I want the leaves longer. I don't think there's any way that I can work in heart-shaped leaves for the sunflower. These are not real, you know, I mean, they're not true to form. Oh, I just can barely look at that, oof. Okay, um, so, I'm gonna take a pencil and I want, since I want my le my uh, petal petals to the flower to be longer, I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it and just draw leaves. They don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be centered. I could care less because really this is an experiment and if it goes wrong, it goes wrong. I'll just have another one that's kind of not perfect and live with it, you know? All right. This is the foundation row. Just kind of drawing on there. Okay, so usually, oh, can you see that? So usually there's a, a set of petals that are kind of above the others. So what I was thinking is that I will make some of the petals go underneath, some of the petals go above the other petals. So I'm drawing lines over the previous lines that I drew on there. It does look very symmetrical, doesn't it? Okay, so I wanna do one here and then do another one that's not quite the same as the others. Here we go. I'll get it eventually. <laughs> Let's do a little one here. We can do one in the middle. And another one over here on the side. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my eraser and I'm going to erase these originals or the, the ones that are for the overlap. I want the ones that I drew originally to fade off into the background. Let's see, let's do this. Uh, we need to do these. And this one. Uh, let's see, this one needs to go this way. 
So I'll just take a little bit off the sides here. This is super easy to see this in person. I'm not sure it translates well to the camera, and I'm sorry about that. I'll hold it up when I get finished so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so this one needs to go. These need to go. And then I need something over here. I don't need to start that there. The nice thing about the vellum is pencil erases nicely off of it. And then we could do this here. Add one more layer to that one. These, these. The reason I went with um, Sharpie is because I think it looks really nice. And if I use a watercolor brush, the paper crinkles something terrible. And I don't want it to be wrinkly. You know what I mean? I don't want it to shrivel. And then we'll put one right here. I don't want all four sides to look perfect. Mirror image to the others. So that's why I'm going back and trying to erase. All right, so I think I got it done. So let me see. Hope it focuses. Can, look, what am I doing? There we go. I hope this is right. Okay, so I need a marker. And the only kind of markers that I have for this that are yellow. I mean, Sharpie only comes out with one version of yellow. And I don't, I'm not sure I really want bright yellow. Um... I don't want to use watercolor because all it does on the vellum is kind of sit on top. And I'm not sure I want to use colored pencils either. All right, let me turn off the camera and think about this for a second and I'll be right back. Okay, I thought about it and I think I am going to use colored pencils. But... Ink tents. Um, maybe not. <laughs> I have Cezanne watercolor pencils. I have Duet watercolors, Duent watercolors, and Duent ink tents. And then I have Prisma Premieres. I don't think I have any other color pencils. I just think I have that, and that's it. The reason I was thinking about using this is because, right, look, let me, it's easier to show it this way. One's a little darker than the other. And I like the way it looks. All right, so the back flowers, I'm going to color with this one. I think maybe I should use an orangey color. A little darker. How about this color right here? That one. Ooh, that's too orange. Ooh, my. That's really orange. Not loving that. Okay, so. Not exactly sure what to use. Hmm. All right, let's try this. Let me see if I can blend these because I really don't like that orange. Oh, guess what? I 
think I can kind of blend it out. There we go. One of these. Still too dark for me, but let's try. Not pressing down so hard on these. Let's see what happens. I know there's some kind of stuff you can use for colored pencils to smooth them out, but. side here because I don't really like the orange orangish color so I'll put some of the yellow on top of it and see what happens and all I'm succeeding in doing is wrinkling my poor vellum So if one color bleeds into the other leaf, maybe that's not quite so bad. That's not as bad as I thought it would be. Okay. Ta-da! All right, let me color some of these. You're going to be bored out of your mind um, just watching me color with color pencils and possibly watercolor pencils that I'm not going to put water on. Um, and then I will come back. Maybe I'll fast forward through it. That way you can see what I'm up to. Okay, so I used Derwent Watercolor Lemon Cadmium number two. And I'm debating whether or not to kind of spread it out with a little bit of water. Because I know it's very waxy, just like um, colored pencils are waxy. And um, using a Sharpie or using one of these kind of pens like this is going to be a little tricky. So I probably will have to outline in um, the jelly pen. I'm not really sure, or one of these um, Signo Uniball pens. I'm going to have to test it and see, but I'm going to need some kind of line definition in between the leaves, which color will help, but still. All right, so, oh, I can feel my heart going up into my throat for doing this. Ooh. It does make me nervous using water on vellum. I'm not exactly comfortable doing that but this is an experiment and if you don't experiment you're never going to learn so let me find uh, I think I need one of these uh, nope too big maybe this one let's try this one this one was a gift I like this one it's got the brush on one end and a pencil on the other. That was a gift from, I think, Art of the Carolinas show. Two years ago, my friends went, and I wasn't able to go, and they bought me presents and mailed them to me. I have the best friends ever. All right, let me go change my paint water. I am not going to show you what it looks like. So let me just discreetly slip away, dump the water, and come back miraculously clean. Okay. So I have clean water. We're going to give this a try. Uh, let me put this over here. Somewhere over here. I guess next to this. And let's see what we get here. 
Oh, much better look. Oh, for Pete's sake, why did I resist this? So pretty. It smooths, it smooths it out. All right, there we go. I have a napkin underneath here because I'm not really sure what's going to happen with this, so. Oh my gosh, what a more wonderful look. And it doesn't matter if it goes off the paper. I really could care. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, I'm loving that. Okie doke. I guess I'm sold on the watercolor thing. All right, so let me put the shading in on this. Let me see what it looks like on the other side. Oh, <gasps> be still my beating little heart. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Let me do this. The only problem with it is, is it's going to wrinkle. So when I go to fold it up, it'll be kind of wavy looking because I've done watercolor on vellum before. So that's why I know it does this. Nevertheless, it's still lovely. Oh, I still like this though. Oh my, it gets my heart beating faster. Oh. Okay, stop. All right, uh, I'm probably gonna paint on this and then I will, why has it got a line? Oh, that's the line for the fold. All right, I was like, what is it doing there? Line for the fold, no problemo. I'll be back. All right, so the camera stopped while I was trying to record. Let me pull this out so you can see the whole situation. There we go. Um, while the camera, I had to transfer stuff from the card, from the camera to the card. So while that was going on, I took all these various pencil shades of orange, kind of a gold color, and yellows to do the flower petals with in varying degrees. And here it is, all colored in. These are the ones that I already did the watercolor and as you can see, the paper really does fold and crinkle. I'm gonna try to figure that out later. But right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the water and apply it to, let me put this under here, what I've already done with coloring and see if I can't smooth some of these out so it's not so orangey or that the orange blends better. Oh yeah, this is, I, I really like this. As much as I like using the Sharpies because they're pretty decisive, um, is there's only one, sh I only have one shade of yellow and this requires more. And the orange that Sharpie comes in I, I don't know how on earth I would blend it because I don't have any chemicals or anything like that that I could blend this with. So I guess the next option is the watercolor because it's easy to blend and I have plenty of watercolor plus watercolor pencils. And I liked using the pencils, they were fun. I don't use them very often and they're right smack dab in my face on the desk, but I do like them. I like how they blend. I think the blending part is a little harder than I thought it would be because I just don't know enough about watercolor and blending and all that to, to really know what's an acceptable technique. And I've seen things where you pull the color down or you take the color up and I'm never really sure which direction to go. You know what I mean? All right, so let's try down.
I do like the way it looks. I do not like how it crinkles up the vellum though. That's not, <laughs> it's not my favorite part. I think one way to do this would be to make a template and then trace that template onto watercolor paper and use watercolor paper. It would, made, it would make a heavy duty piece, but I think that the blending and using the watercolor would be fabulous. So I may try that in the future. We'll see how this goes. Right now I'm just gonna deal with this because I really do like using vellum. Ooh, I should have erased my pencil mark there. Mm -mm -mm. And I've got it on all four of them. Well, stinkers. Okay. And then I'm back to where I started originally. That one's really, really dark. This one's really light. I don't like the lines so much. So the shading is much better through here than it is through around here. So I'm thinking that I need a dark gold. And I thought maybe it would show up better. And I'm looking on camera and it doesn't show up very well. So I think I do have to use some of this orange for the shading. I could use gray, but I don't know. All right, let's see what we got here. So I'll put these on the parts that I think will cast a shadow from one leaf to the next. All right, let's do this. We did that one. So we need to do these guys around here like this. And then this one really needs to be dark. I'm sorry, I'm mumbling. <laughs> I get irritated when I hear other that people do things and they mumble to themselves. I'm like, stop mumbling. Well, see, now I understand <laughs> what the mumbling's all about. It's not necessarily mumbling as much as it is talking to yourself and trying to figure out a solution to a problem you have. So I understand the mumbling or the talking under your breath, if that's what you want to call it. I don't know. All right. See, I think that gives a little more depth. Don't you think? All right. I don't want to use too much more water. Where's my, here it is. So I'm just kind of not dry brushing, but I'm just not dipping it into water as much as I could. I just want to smooth some of the lines out. I don't really want to get it wet, wet. So uh, is there a difference between wet and wet, wet? <laughs> I'm not sure if that's an official art term. All right, now let's damp this off a little bit. There we go. It's not smoothing out as much if I don't get the paintbrush a little bit wet. These are not real shadows. It's just, in my mind, they're shadows. How's that? Okay, I think that might be about all these things, all the water these things can take. They're very crinkled up now. And I can't blow dry this because basically this is plastic and I don't want to melt it or make it crinkle any more than it already has. Okay, so there's that. Yay! I'm gonna let this dry, and then I'm gonna think about green around the edges for the leaves, and then I've got to figure out what to do about the middle. Do I want to put the color in this way? I might want to do the color in here, but then it makes it, and the reason is because I'm not sure I want to put all the color on the back. Would you ever turn it over and look at the back? I mean, look at this. When you look at this, wow, what a difference. Um, when you open it, what do you want to see? You, I think you want to see the center. No? This is fine. But you don't want to flip it over to really look at the center there. So I think... 
with the muted colors from the opposite side. Nope, it's this way, this way, this way, and this way. When you open it, you'll want to see the center of the flower, right? Yeah, I think I'm going to do the center this way so that, I don't know. I don't know what to do. <laughs> oh, goodness. It looks really good on this side. Maybe I should do the center on this side because, yeah, but if somebody glues this in a book, well, it'll be muted like this. So I guess it doesn't matter. All right, so we'll do the center on this. And I need to erase all of this. Let me take care of that right now before I forget. And then some of this will erase off, but not a lot. I was watching CBS Sunday Morning this morning, and they were talking about Cezanne's uh, watercolor paintings and um, how he was kind of um, bucked the system about leaving pencil marks in his artwork on watercolor that he would draw with pencil and then do the watercolor. That was the accepted method is that the pencil would kind of disappear underneath the watercolor, but he didn't really do that. He left his pencil lines and made them dark enough that when he watercolored, you could still see them through the watercolor. And that was evidently a revolutionary sort of technique that he had. And I thought that was very interesting. I think he was more, um, what did they say? He was more, um, he did landscapes, portraits, and still lifes. Those were basically the three things that he did. I'm sorry, look at my fingers. I died yesterday. Paper. All right. So that's this, and then I will do something about the center. I'm going to let this dry for a few hours because I know I can't hit it with the gun because I only have a heat gun. Um, well, basically, it's dry. Okay, well, boom. I have to figure out what to do to the center. I think I should paint the center first, then draw in the details from there. Yes? Okay. Okay. Let me go look at the center of a sunflower to be sure I remember what I'm doing. I like using past pictures as a reference because I forget stuff. I mean, I'm not a spring chicken anymore, and I forget things. So I think I've done showed you guys this in a previous video, my lovely resin book that Carla from What If NC made me. Um, so I drew sunflowers in the past have drawn different versions of sunflowers and the centers are all different so I'm going to do a variation of these because I really like them and I found something uh, I, that I can't show you because it's in a book that I haven't revealed yet. But I'm going to use what I saw in this book. Oh, that's not going to work either. I'm trying to do it so you can see what I'm doing here. Um, I'm going to use what I saw in this book as a reference for what I will do in here. And that is, they were very tiny leaves they're around the edge of the seed center. And I'm going to draw these in with pencil. A little tedious. But I want it to look a little more authentic. All right, so, oh, you can't see that, can you? Jeez, Louise, come on, focus. There you go, the white, I'm sorry. There we go. Okay, so, I'm not sure if I should paint this first 
or if I should draw the lines in for the seeds. I'm a little bit indecisive here, I'm sorry. I think I'm gonna go with this. I'm going to do the brown first, then I will do the yellow, and then I will draw in the seeds with a pen, because I think that's probably gonna be the easiest way to do it, because I found that if I use the pens first and then do watercolor over it, it kind of obscures or lessens the ink of the, the pen. And I don't always want that look, and I don't want it here. I want to be able to see the line for the seeds. So I think I need to watercolor this first, then do the seeds. And I've got to find a brown in here that is light enough that it is not going to obscure anything. There we go. That it's not going to obscure anything that I do in here. Okay, for the next part, I'm going to use Derwent watercolor, and this one's called Grass Green. So all I'm doing here is coloring in I think I don't like this color. Let's try... I don't want it to be like deeply dark. What is this one? Mineral green. Let's try this. I don't know. I may regret this. Oh, well. Oh, not so bad. If I lightly color it, maybe it'll be okay. Let's try. See, I didn't really want a blue tint to the leaves. This other one has kind of, it seems like it kind of has a, has a blue tint to it, and I don't want blue. So, let's try this one. What's this one called? 
emerald green. <laughs> well, it would help if we had a working tip on it. I have my pencil sharpener here. Here, let me sharpen this up and see what we get. more vibrant green and the leaves on a sunflower plant are dark but I didn't want anything really dark green maybe this one is better I don't, listen I just don't have a clue leaf green oh <laughs> oh wow that's really dark it's kind of a funky color Let's see. Let's test it with the water. Well, son of a gun. What do you think? Oh, I kind of like that. All right, what's this one called? Leaf green. Hmm. Yeah. So I can do the lighter. this morning and I forgot to turn the camera on because I was watching court TV <laughs> so I started doing the lines in the uh, petals and the little leaves that are behind the petals and now I'm starting to draw the center and I didn't quite get my center centered <laughs> this is what I'm using for my bases right here All right, so I'm going to start doing all the filling in of the center. And I'm using a Stadler zero, uh, 0 0.3, which is a pretty small, I think the smallest the one they make is 0 0.005. And then it goes to 0 0.01, 0 0.02. I have them in numerical order over. And I've used, um, on the other lines, these I used a 1 and a two and I ended up throwing I mean the point one point two I, I used those and I ended up throwing one of them away because the nib was so worn down from I guess something I did in the past that uh, it just wasn't showing up so bye bye and because this has been painted on it is very difficult to get these pens Maybe this one will be going to the graveyard next. Woo. It's got a good tip on it, but it doesn't seem to have too much ink. 
All right, maybe I just have to go slower. There we go. Um, so I'm drawing in the centers. Center. And as I get outwards towards here, I will do the petals again because I can see them from here. And then I will fill in all of this with lots of little circles. And let's see. They're just circles with little dots, and they're not anything to write home about, nothing to get excited about. It's just monotonous, tedious sort of stuff. And then you put a little dot in each one. Alright, so maybe what I would like to do now is fast forward through this because this is going to drive all of us crazy. I think. I'm going to fast forward. Okay, so I'm done with the center, which took about 15-20 minutes. Now I want to kind of color in some of these petals. I'm not sure. I think I need a more orange color, so let me try. This Derwent orange. No, let's do the... Alrighty, I can't decide already. Here we go. <laughs> How about this one? I don't know if this will work. Oh yeah, it will. Okay, so I'm just going to go around and kind of, you know, give it a little tweak so that they stand out a little more than the center does. I'll be back. Husband's running in and out of the house, so every time he leaves and comes back, I have to turn it off because he has to come in here and talk to me. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to apply some water around here a little bit and, and uh, that's it. <laughs> I'll fast forward. Okay. Husband took the car to get it inspected. I'm all alone, so I'm going to hurry up and do this. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. All right, so I want to do something to distract. I'm going to tell the truth from how blurry it is on the um, around the edges here. So I'm just going to do some of these little dots. This is a 1.2 Stadler, Stadler, however you pronounce it. So it has, ugh, it's not going to do it either. I have to tell you, working on vellum with watercolor on top of it already is a little bit trying on your patience when you think your pens are going bad and then you put them on a piece of paper and it turns out it's the vellum 
that you're working on. It's not the pen itself. It's the fact that the vellum has like a plastic coating. I mean, it's plastic. And then you apply something else on top of it, like maybe two or three layers. And after a while, all these lovely felt tip pens and things, they're like, nah, I don't think so. Not today, honey. So I have to beat them into submission. <laughs> um, and then I ruin the nib. So, you know. <laughs> I'm not getting smarter. I'm working harder. <laughs> All right, so after I did this one, I discovered I've got a book full of these ideas in my resin flower book that I could use to make these. And so let me show you a few, and I might come back and show more. All right, there it is. And the reason it looks weird is because the light's weird. We're having a rain, stormy day. But this is the way it's going to go. And I did put this under a glass, um, a weighted glass, uh, what do you call it, thing. And uh, left it there over the weekend, and it did not, <laughs> it didn't flatten it out any. All right, so you take these two on the side, fold them in. This one goes up. And then this one goes down. Doesn't that look very cool? And then when you flip it over, look at that. I think this one is much better than the first one that I did. I really like this much better. Um, it was a lot of fun, but man, it was a lot of work. There were a lot of hours spent doing this. But it was worth it because I got something I'm really pleased with. All right, so I'm going to set this aside, and then I'm going to this over here and go through this real quick. I think that there's a couple in here like the camellias that would look lovely on one of those vellum envelopes. Possibly a Gerber daisy. Um, let's see. The anemone is the one that I was thinking about the most. A nice anemone or now tulips would I don't think a tulip would be very good um, a dog rose I think would look lovely because the rounded petals would look good because there's like four you know there's four of these so I think that might work to go here they would be giant but I think that might work um, maybe the French marigold would work uh, zinnias might work or zinnias, however you pronounce it, wherever you live. Or this dahlia pom-pom, pom-pom dahlia. I think that would be lovely. Uh, let's see what else. I think that's what I've got for now. Maybe the Indian blanket. I'm not sure because these are so rounded. I'm not sure, well, I could do them pointy anyway and then snip some of the points off, uh, snip in between the points. Probably could have done this with this one so there would be no green on it, but I kind of like the fact that it's got the green. I'm really pleased with how well this turned out. I'm, I'm surprised because I wasn't really sure how it was going to go, but I really like it. Oh, the light in here is terrible. Okay. Anyway, so that's it. I just wanted to show this to you and, you know, so you can see what I did with it. I think I'm going to do a couple more. I might come on and, and um, do another, another video like this, drawing one of these other ones that I see in my book and see if I can't make, make them work. I, I kind of like these. Actually, I really like them. I, I don't know. I think this French Miracle would be really good. Anyway, might be a while before I do it again because i got so many other things in mind. I'm finishing up a journal that I'm going to do a flip, and it's a big, huge journal. So um, that'll be in a couple weeks, I think. Yeah, a couple weeks. All right, guys. I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.